For this video, we're going to be discussing roots, zeros, and equations of polynomial functions. So this is actually fairly similar to something we did for quadratic equations, because a quadratic equation is a polynomial function. And the roots, intercepts, factors, and equations of a function, I should say a function, not an equation, okay, they're all connected. So the roots, intercepts, factors, and equations, let's change that to function, okay, they are all related to each other. Okay, and this is going to be a bit of a review of stuff we did when we did uh, quadratics. So the x-intercepts of this function, okay, this is a cubic function, we can see the x-intercepts are at negative 2, 0, 0, 0, and 3, 0. So those are our x-intercepts. So the roots, remember, are just the x values of those equations. So negative 2, 0, and 3. If I wanted to write the equation in, stand, or in factored form, remember, I simply put each one of those in parentheses, and I change the sign. So negative 2 becomes 2, 3 becomes minus 3. Because this is 0, okay, hopefully everybody knows that x minus 0 is just x. So it just looks like that. Okay, and for the equation in standard form, okay, to go from factored form to standard form, I just multiply everything out. And the trick here is to just work through these one set at a time. So I'm going to multiply x and 2 by x. So I get x squared plus 2x. And then I'm going to multiply that by x minus 3. So x squared times x is x cubed. 2x times negative, or x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared. 2x times x is plus 2x squared. And 2x times negative 3 is minus 6x. If we combine our like terms, we get x squared negative 3 plus 2 is minus 1. Sorry, this is x cubed. So negative 3 plus 2 is minus 1 x squared, and then my minus 6. So my new equation in standard form is x squared minus 6x, or minus x cubed minus x squared minus 6x. All right, so that's really all there is to it. These things are all just linked together. So let's talk about some other stuff here that is kind of new. Multiplicity. So a zero or factor or x-intercept can occur more than once in a polynomial equation. And the number of times that a factor occurs is called the multiplicity of the factor. And you can find the multiplicity by looking at the factor's exponent. So if I take a look here, I've got y equals x minus 3 squared times 2x times x plus 5. So if I look here, x minus 3, the 0, where we just take the opposite of the sign, is 3. And the multiplicity is the exponent, which is 2. For 2x, well, if I think 2x equals 0, divide both sides by 2, then I get x equals 0. So the 0 that goes with 2x is 0. And it's multiplicity because I don't have an exponent. Okay, the multiplicity is not 0. Careful, when we don't have an exponent, the exponent we put is 1. So the multiplicity here is 1. And then x plus 5, take the opposite of this sign, and I get negative 5, and the multiplicity is 5. Okay, so that's all there is to it on multiplicity. Now we got to talk about the effect of multiplicity on the graph. So if a 0 has an even multiplicity, then the graph bounces off the x-axis at that point. If a 0 has an odd multiplicity, then the graph crosses the x-axis at that point. So if I look here, Okay, I've got y equals x times x plus 5 times squared times x minus 2. So if I think about the zeros that go with this, okay, just x tells me I've got a 0 at 0, plus 5 tells me I have a 0 at negative 5, and minus 2 tells me I have a 0 at positive 2. This has a multiplicity of 1, which tells me it's going to cross, because 1 is an odd number. This one has a multiplicity of 2, which tells me it's going to bounce because that's an even number. And this has a multiplicity of 1 again, so once again it's going to cross. 
I look at my graph here, that kind of shows it. At negative 5, with their even multiplicity of squared, the graph comes down and bounces off the x-axis and goes back up. At some point up here, we can't see it, but at some point, the graph turns and comes back down. And at 0, 0, which has a multiplicity of 1, an even number, it crosses. Okay, So it crosses right here, goes down, comes back up. And at 2, which also has an odd multiplicity, it crosses. So we can see what it looks like for the graph to bounce and to cross at the x-axis. All right, so let's look at an example of this. So this one says to write the zeros, their multiplicity, and the effects for this equation. So I've got x minus 4 squared times, x times 2x plus 5 times x minus 3. So if I look at my zeros, x minus 4 tells me I've got a 0 of 4. 2x plus 5, this one we might need to solve out. 2x plus 5 equals 0. Subtract 5 on both sides. So I get 2x equals negative 5. Divide by 2. x equals negative 5 halves. Okay, so this one I've got a 0 at negative 5 halves. And then this one, just take the opposite sign, you got a 0 at 3. For their multiplicities, this one has an even multiplicity of 2. This one, I don't have anything written down, so that's a multiplicity of 1. And this one has a multiplicity of 4. It's just the exponent. And then if I think about the effects, well, this one, uh, the 0 at 4 has a multiplicity of 2, so it's going to bounce. At 1, it has, or at negative 5 halves, it has a multiplicity of 1, so it's going to cross. And at 3, it has a multiplicity of 4, so it's also going to bounce. So if I was to draw a really rough draft, sketch of this graph. Okay, I know I've got a 0 at 4, let's say that's 4 right there, a 0 at negative 5 halves, that's over here, and a 0 at 3. And I know that what happens is that it crosses at negative 5 halves, and it bounces at the other two. I also, I don't need to multiply this out, but I know because my leading coefficients on all of these are positive, so this has a leading, it has a positive leading coefficient, okay? And I know some other stuff about graphs. Two plus one is three plus four is seven, so I know this points in opposite directions. That's actually important, because what I know about my graph is it's gonna come up from here, it's gonna bounce and go back down. At some point, it's gonna come back up at three, and at three, it bounces again and goes back down. And at some point, it's going to come back up somewhere between 3 and 4, and it's going to cross like that. So that's a rough draft sketch of what this graph looks like, simply knowing the multiplicity of each one of our zeros. Okay. For example, 2, it says a function has zeros at 0 with a multiplicity of 2, negative 5 with a multiplicity of 1, and 2 with a multiplicity of 1. I'm going to write the equation in standard and factored forms. So if I take a look at these, I know, if I think about this, okay, it has a function at zero. Okay, the, the equation that, or the factor that corresponds to zero is x. It also has a zero at negative five, so that's x. We do the opposite sign, plus five. Then it has a, another zero at two, so we go x, opposite sign, minus two. Then I want to put in our multiplicities. So the 0 at 0 has a multiplicity of 2, so that's x squared. Uh, at negative 5, it has a multiplicity of 1, so I don't need to write anything. At 2, it has a multiplicity of 1, so I don't need to write anything. So my equation in factored form is x squared times x plus 5 times x minus 2. Now, I need to take this and get rid of this now. Okay, I need to take this. And to put it in standard form, I need to multiply these things all out. So we're going to work with two factors at a time. So first I'm going to work with x squared and x plus 5. So x squared times x plus 5 is x cubed plus 5x squared. Then I want to work with the two remaining factors. So I'm going to double distribute. So x cubed times x, x cubed times 2, 5x squared times x, 5x squared times 2. 
and that gives me this resulting polynomial. So x cubed times x is x to the fourth, x cubed times negative two is negative two x cubed, five x squared times x is five x cubed, five x squared times two is minus 10 x squared. Combine my two like terms, negative two plus five is three, and I get my equation in standard form, which is x cubed plus three x squared, or x to the fourth plus three x cubed minus 10 x squared. And so that's everything we need to know about the roots, zeros, and equations of a polynomial function.